first part that we're going to be talking about is um, some of the characteristics of peas in general, and then we'll get more specifically into edible potted peas. The, the pea is Piasum sativum. It's a cool season um, legume. It's frost hardy when, uh, when it's uh, in the vegetative stage, becomes less so once it's gone into reproductive phase. Um, it's a diploid with seven pairs of chromosomes, uh, fairly easy to breed because of that. It's also self-pollinated, and the, the, the pollination is, um, self-pollination is enforced by the anthers dehissing 24 hours before the flower even opens. You can see some pea flowers in this image here um, of the intact flowers and then one that's been taken apart so you can see the various parts to the flower here. Um, you have the, the carpels surrounded by a, an uh, anther sheath with the anthers attached to it, a style and stigma, and then that is surrounded by a pair of petals called the keel, and then you have two wing petals out to the side and then the banner petal. Um, peas are generally propagated in, and um, sold as pure lines, as varieties. The, um, uh, no one's ever really devised an economical way to produce F1 hybrids with peas. Peas are, are quite an ancient crop, domesticated somewhere between eight and 10,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent area, which is modern day um, Jordan, Syria, Iraq, Turkey, um, in this particular area. Um, it's also been a very historically important in played an important role in genetics with um, being the crop that Mendel worked with um, to devise the laws of genetics. But even before Mendel worked with peas, there were other breeders clear back in the beginning of the 19th century that were systematically developing some of the, the original breeding techniques that were used in peas. Some of the changes that happened under domestication with pea was uh, it's similar to what has happened in other legumes. There's been a reduction in seed dormancy, uh, shift from pods that shatter very easily to pods that shatter less easily, an increase in seed size. Wild peas tend to be purple uh, flowered and uh, have colored seed and there's been selection for white types out of this. There's also been a, a shift in cotyledon color. Uh, wild peas tend to be yellow cotyledon color with um, a round shape, such as you see here. Um, and there's been types derived which are green cotyledon, represented here on the, your right, also with the wrinkled seeded trait. Uh, wrinkled seeded trait is something that's used you know, almost exclusively in garden peas. Pea production happens in the U.S. Uh, in different areas depending on whether it's uh, dry pea or uh, uh, the garden pea. Most of the commercial dry pea production is in the Palouse area you know, of Idaho and Washington or the Mindac region in North Dakota and Minnesota. Uh, green shell processed production happens in uh, many northern states including uh, New York, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Washington, Oregon, and, and Michigan. And a snap pea, there is uh, some processing that is done in the Columbia Basin and then in the Magic Valley in Idaho. And then finally, there's fresh market production, primarily winter production that takes place in California and Florida, as well as elsewhere in the U.S. On a worldwide basis, uh, peas are grown, again, primarily in these more temperate, cool temperate zones. You can see quite a bit of production in Canada, through Europe, in China, in the highlands in India, in Australia, and in highland regions in Africa as well. So um, the, uh, you know, there's both dry and, and processed pea production being shown here. A lot of the um, snap pea production, particularly uh, on a worldwide basis, is done in, for um, shipping into um, winter markets in Europe and the Americas. Uh, in Africa, we, we have production for the, the European market and then Central America and South America is where you see production for the uh, U.S. market. 
I've kind of backed into what the different types of P's are, but here's uh, something a little more formal um, describing these. The field or the dry grain peas where the, the mature seed is eaten, and then the other class, a general class, are the vegetable peas. And the vegetable peas include things like the shell peas, pictured here at the top, and um, which has a, uh, basically it's just the, the seed inside that is eaten. But then there are two types in which the whole pod is eaten. These include the snow peas, or Chinese peas sometimes they are called, and then the snap peas shown here at the very bottom, and you can see that they have different shapes that are characteristic of each type. And in a little while we'll, we'll get into some of the traits that um, make these different shapes and the reasons for why they are why they are in peas. This chart here uh, gives you a little more definition on the, the market classes. We have the different types here uh, in the first column and then for cotyledons how they differ for the, the cotyledons, the pod, the plant, and then the parts that are consumed. If we look at field pea, these can be either yellow or green cotyledon color and they tend to have smooth uh, seed. There is pod fiber present, but the walls are thin. Plants are generally quite tall and it's the mature dry seeds that are consumed. With garden pea, generally these are green cotyledon mostly wrinkled seeded, but there are some smooth types. These are mainly the Alaska, the early Alaska types. Um, there is pod fiber present and the pod walls are thin. The plants are generally short. This is particularly true of processing types where mechanical harvest is, in, is used. And then it's the immature seeds that are used um, that are shelled out of these types for consumption. Snow pea has green cotyledon color generally, although you can find some yellow types. The seed are both either smooth or wrinkled. Um, it really doesn't matter in a snow pea because you generally eat it when the pods are so young and the seeds are so young that it, the, um, the seed characteristics don't influence the, the flavor. In these types there is no pod wall fiber, but the pod walls are thin. The plants can be either tall or short, um, and they're, uh, it's, it is the very young pods that are part consumed. Snap peas generally have green cotyledons, they have seeds wrinkled, um, the parchment is absent, and they have thick pod walls. And they're mostly short, there are a few tall types, um, but particularly for processing you want short again. And then it's the, the immature pods and seeds that are eaten. Um, but they're more mature than what you find typically in a snow pea. Uh, 